yeah, I've really never had anything like this that was ongoing. So knock of the wood, uh, knock of the wood. Uh. You know you tune in for the humor. <laughs> okay, I turned it on this time, right? <laughs> Hey everybody, <laughs> it's Tanya here. How are you? Well, I just shot a whole video and forgot to turn on the camera. Gotta love it. <laughs> it's been ages since I've been in front of the camera and oh my gosh, lots has happened. Today I'm here with a bit of a bit of a personal share, a bit of a bit of a, and uh, it's a little TMI. Is there ever too much TMI? I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a personal share, a little bit of a different thing, just to give you an update on what's going on and to share a bit about um, a health condition that actually affects a lot of artists and might be something that maybe you are here because you saw this as a keyword and you're here looking for it. And um, so I'm going to tell you a bit about that and give you a bit of an update. And I will timestamp this just in case. If you are here to hear about the condition, just click in the description and you can jump there now. So, ah, goodness. Welcome to the first not raining day in 21 days. We had almost a world record here in our location. 21 days of rain. <sighs> anyway, I'm just, I'm in a funny mood because I'm laughing at the fact that I just shot a whole video without turning on the camera. That is the state of mind I'm in. But why am I here today instead of sharing with you a channeled painting and art? Well, it's because I've had an injury. And you might notice that I am not moving this part of my body. <laughs> and that's because um, I ended up with an injury that is a very unusual one. Um, but if you were an artist, it's something to be very mindful of. So this video, I'm going to kind of split into two sections. I'm going to talk a bit about the what is relevant to you as an artist, if you're here as an artist or somebody who's considering uh, doing um, creation work, crafting, art, anything where you are using a part of your body in a repeated motion over and over. And then I'm going to talk to you a bit as those of you who are here as star seeds and spiritual folks. So uh, about a week ago, it's been, yeah, today's day eight. About a week ago, I was painting at night, having a grand old time like I always do and I love it. And I went to stand up and I was like, oh my gosh, what happened? And I actually looked to see if I was cut, if I was bleeding, because it felt like a knife cut right across my shoulder and there was nothing there. And I couldn't, I was looking around like, what the heck was that? And I, I went to move again, same thing again. And it was excruciating. And um, this is my good arm. So it ended up being a situation where I could not move my arm at all. And so that has meant being one-handed for a week. It has meant adapting everything. Um, you know, there's things that I just can't do. I can't do makeup or hair. I have to wear clothes with buttons because that's all that I can get on. And it's just been really challenging. So I thought I would share that with you just because um, that's where I'm at, but also this might be something that you've experienced in the past. So I ended up in this situation where I wasn't sleeping. I was on maybe day four of it. And I've had repetitive stress injuries throughout my life because it's a challenge. It's a personal challenge. It's something I've had to deal with my whole life. I grew up in a time period where everything was about go as fast as you can go. Harder is better. Burn through it. Work through it. Stupid mindset is old school. But you know, the crap that we learn as kids, sometimes it sticks around. So that was in the back of my mind. And, um, as an artist, sometimes you just get into the flow. And as a spiritual person, you will understand this too, where you have those moments in time where you are just following that energy, your heart feels good, you're in the mode, you're following your muse and time disappears. But unfortunately, sometimes so can that body mind connection, which as someone who channels is kind of ironical, especially lately, the last couple of months, there have been so many messages about embodiment, bringing your spiritual into your physical and working as a complete being instead of separated, right? And so here I am doing the exact same thing that I'm getting the messages about and like pay attention to the message. <laughs> so that's what I'm kind of dealing with. And um, yeah, it's been really interesting, but 
So yes, I ended up in the ER at one point because the pain didn't go away and um, it just kept going to the point where I could not move at all, which meant not being able to sleep either. So, you know, try and sleep when you can't move your arm it, it, without it being painful. It's really harsh. So, um, like most things, I'm very self-sufficient and I just get through on my own, but it's been quite a wake up call about that and learning to have to ask for help, learning to put myself first and take care of myself and say, all right, this is not getting better. I'm just gonna have to go to the ER. Uh, we don't have walk-ins in the area that I'm in and um, so that's what I did and even though it was crazy and it took pretty much half of a day and three x-rays later the um, emergency doc said well the challenge is it looks like a dislocated shoulder and I was like how could I have done that I didn't hit myself on anything I didn't do anything and he said but it's not what it is is a condition that's called calcific tendonitis which can feel like a dislocated shoulder for two weeks, two solid weeks. I'm on day eight. Ah. <laughs> Lots of adrenaline when they uh, do that because they're poking and prodding, but yes. So that's what I'm dealing with. It's a condition called calcific tendonitis. It is uh, quite common in people that have had a history of compression or repetitive stress injury. It can be um, very prevalent in people that hy have hypothyroidism, that'd be me. And uh, apparently it is 70% of the people that deal with it are women. So even more important for those of us who are artists, because I think a lot of the people that follow my channel are women. Hi guys, I love you. Thanks for being here. Uh, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. <laughs> Personal plug. Got to do that before I forget. <laughs> I'm trying to do this all in one piece without editing today because um, I'm one-handed and I also don't want to repeat this on this side, right? How silly would that be? Anyway, um, back to the calcific tendonitis is really just a buildup of calcium deposits, um, calcium crystals, and they're very sharp. And so what the ER doc said was it can feel like little knives that are cutting when you move like glass. And that is literally what it felt like. So it's quite painful and uh, yeah, I really never had anything like this that was ongoing. So knock of the wood, uh, knock of the wood. Uh. You know you tune in for the humor. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so this condition is really a buildup of calcium over time and it can be dormant for most of your life. I, I was reading some stats and some people don't get it till they're in their 70s. Some people can get it very young. Um, they've had documented cases of uh, infants and toddlers having this, which is remarkable. But in my case, I guess this has just been going on for a very long time and uh, it just got triggered by too much overuse. And so I keep looking to my empty studio. Where I just want to sit and paint, but I have to have a break for at least two weeks and maybe longer. And even though I feel like I could sit down and do it one-handed and just tape stuff to the table, what am I gonna do? Create it on the other side, right? So I'm really on an enforced break and dealing with all of this stuff together. I think I should share a bit more about the condition and maybe make that a bit more specific. So here's the bullet point. Calcific tendonitis can happen um, pretty much on the big joints. A lot of them, uh, majority of cases, like what I've got happened here. So that's, I'll just turn my body. So that's right about here. And that is right where the rotator cuff is. And sometimes it can be a little bit higher. So if you're not familiar with the anatomy, you have your clavicle. There's this, a muscle called the supraspinatus that goes behind and comes underneath. That's a really interesting one for you as an artist to check out and make sure you're doing, you know, come at kind of these stretches because that can really get tight especially when you're hunched over and working like this and doing fine detail because you're gripping your brush really tightly and you're pulling forward. So all of that combined with, you know, being on the computer, being on our phone, it adds up over time. 
Um, but also, yes, yeah, so you can get those deposits. And then underneath, there's also what's called a bursa. And the bursa is a flu fluid filled sac that kind of, it's like a little buffer between the bones and ligaments and joints. And so when you get this deposit of calcium, it can get very inflamed, meaning that your body's saying, hey, that's not supposed to be there. Let's send some, you know, white blood cells down there and do some work, do their little Pac-Man thing, munch, 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 munch. Body's not absorbing calcium the way it should be. There's too much. So what happens is your body sends all of this uh, red blood cells, white blood cells, the macrophages, they're all headed there and you get this inflammation. And when that builds up, you get a compression. And so not only do you have the, the little calcified crystals with their sharp edges, you now have inflammation that's putting more pressure. And so you can have that feeling. So what I feel is, uh, I hope that's facing the camera. It's right here, but it is radiating down. And so when it was really bad, it was all the way down into my elbow. And then my whole forearm was seizing up too. So I was like, <laughs> you know, like Frankenstein monster, but I couldn't let it release. And if you've had a muscle cramp, my friend, you know what I'm talking about, how painful that can be. So really the, um, that's kind of the physiology of it is that you have that compression from the inflammation. So what do you do? Well, um, I'm gonna share my experience. It's been absolute havoc and that is a lot to do with just the cluster of time. So there was a lot happening um, in my geographic area uh, we had storms, we had power outs, there was, you know, stoppages. And so a lot of people, it was full moon. So there was, you know, the ERs and the full moon are crazy. And then uh, my GP got ill, she went off. There was no one to follow up behind her. So I had to do an online telehealth and they went offline. Like it's just been crazy. In the end, I ended up with a topical cream. I use a homeopathic cream called Tramiel, which you can find or something similar. And, um, just to ease the inflammation. The other thing that I did that's made a huge difference was completely cutting out anything that's gonna cause me inflammation in my diet. So unfortunately for me, who is the biggest lover of potato chips, like you have no idea, it's an addiction. No potato chips, <laughs> no sugar, no chocolate. Um, I eat extremely healthy anyways, just because I love really good food, but I do have a tendency to be a bit of a snacker. And so, um, especially because I went off gluten years ago. So gluten-free snacks, they have a lot of stuff in it that I don't really want to eat, but I love crunchy food. And so I was eating, you know, some crackers and potato chips and, you know, snack foods all the time. So all of that's gone. It's three days, four days since cutting out all that inflammatory stuff and things have really <sighs> calmed down. So that's the second one. I don't know if I'm going to have the energy to do a lot of advanced editing with this video, but maybe I will. And I'll do a bullet point. Bing, 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 bing. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so that was the second thing was cutting out uh, anything that is inflammatory. Um, the third thing is having to really come to terms with stillness. And that's a son of a gun for me because I like to do stuff. I like to be doing my art. I love to share with you guys. I love to be online. I love sharing my Instagram stories every day. And so full stop. So that's been also very interesting. Side note, a lot of the neck pain that I've been having has gone because I'm not on my phone all day hunching over. Something to think about. And then the last thing has really just been awareness and learning to understand that I'm going to have to make some radical changes to the way that I've been working. And that's okay because it's about time. So I look at this as a great opportunity, um, a bloody painful one. <laughs> <laughs> but a great opportunity nonetheless, because now I can say, okay, here's my beautiful desk and I've got all my art supplies sitting here. And when I'm ready, I can sit down and I can do it in a small amount of time. And when the mood comes and I feel like I want to get into it and I can do it, that's great, but maybe I'll set a timer. And so I'll have to get up, walk around for a bit and then come back down to it, like Pomodoro technique or whatever those things are. So there's a few tips that I hope you find useful. If you're here because you were looking for information about the condition itself, the best tip I can give you, um, this is in fact coming from my doctor, from the ER doctor, from the pharmacist, all of them said, 
talk to an orthopedic surgeon or a physiotherapist. So that's what I would suggest. Yes, your GP is going to give you information. Um, yes, you're going to be on YouTube looking up videos on this because it's an unusual condition. It's kind of rare. You're probably not looking it up specifically yet unless you've already been diagnosed with it. And I hope you find some information. I found a couple really great people who shared information about what they were doing and actually did a vlog. I was going to do that, but quite frankly, it's been too painful to even get the camera. Like I've got to tell you, trying to get a camera into a tripod with one hand, but I did it. <laughs> Took an hour and a half, but I did it. And the other thing is learning how to ask for support. So uh, for me, who is very self-sufficient, uh, that's been very challenging. I do everything on my own. I'm on my own working here and I love that. And I'm very introverted and I'm very comfortable with myself and my own company. But when you really do get into a jam, it is nice to have somebody to be able to say, uh, hey, could you drive me to the ER? Because I can't get in my car. <laughs> so yeah, learning to let go of some of that control stuff. Control issues? A little bit. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I hope you found that um, helpful in some ways. The other thing that I was thinking of doing, if you are an artsy person, if you're still here, thank you for hanging out with me. Hands up if you remember WKRP from the 80s. Doo -doo. Yes, I'm that old. I don't care. I'm proud. I earned these, baby. I earned those. Those are mine. I love them. And I look damn awesome for my age. Thank you very much. No hair, no makeup, baby. Oh, natural. Because <laughs> I only have one hand. What are you going to do? <laughs> Took me 20 minutes to get my shirt on today. Eh. It's all stages of learning. Anyways, <laughs> what I'm really curious about, and leave me a comment below, um, because I, or hey, new community tab is active. Yay, I love that I can talk to you guys all week. So check that out, because now we can do polls and talk to each other. But leave a comment below, because you never know if what you're asking is something that somebody else wants to ask, but maybe they're feeling a little too shy or scared or vulnerable, and you can really help people out that way. Also, um, by sharing this video, you never know who might need to see this. And thank you for that if you are doing it already. I love you guys. And don't forget to subscribe. I always forget to say that. Anyway, are you, my friends, interested in a video where, um, from an artist perspective, I actually talk about what are the things that you can do to prevent injury as an artist? which sounds odd, but it's very true. And I'll tell you, I went looking for these uh, over the last month or so. It's funny how this all comes full circle, but I really wanted something that maybe showed some stretches and some awareness techniques that you can do because, uh, and this is anybody creative. This is you as a spiritual person. If you're meditating, if you are doing work at home, if you are doing any creating, you can really follow your heart and get into the energy, into the flow, and then, Time disappears, right? Just gone. Hours are gone. And the next thing you know, you're hunched up, you're squished up, and you don't even realize that you're, you haven't even been feeling your body. So um, let me know if you'd find that interesting because I would happily do that for you guys and share that. I'm going to do it for me anyway, so why not share it with you? And so Maybe you'll find that beneficial. For those of you that are here for the spiritual starseed content, Thank you so much for hanging out. And I think the thing I really wanted to share again is really seeing this as an opportunity. I saw a post today um, in one of the social media groups that I'm in. And somebody had asked a really poignant question, which was, how is this spiritual shift working for me? I just got diagnosed with cancer. I don't understand that what do you guys think about this whole situation? And this is a very tough, um, visceral experience, right? Like this is a 10 out of a 10 experience to hear that you have something that could potentially take your life. It's very intense. But a lot of us are feeling that exact same feeling in our physicality, in our energetic body, um, even if that's not a, a physical threat, but because of what's happening in the world right now, because the energy is so intense. And so how do we deal with that, looking at it from a, a larger perspective? So in this situation, what I'm looking at is 
um, a complete and full stop of the way that I've been living. And it's my physical body that has basically said, you are done doing things this way. And if you don't, I'm going to shut you down and you can't do anything. So it took a bit of coming to terms with that. You know, I'm on day eight here. And in the first, like, I think day five or so after getting the diagnosis of what this was, I was really frustrated and I just wanted to work more. And I was in a lot of pain, so I couldn't do anything. And that was taking up all my time and my mind. But when that started to ease down a bit, I was like, shit, now what am I doing? Now what am I going to do? And so it kind of eased off. And, and now I look at it as a really freaking fabulous opportunity, a really great opportunity. And I can sit back and look at this and say, okay, this is a really intense situation for me because it's a full change of my lifestyle, right? Just as the person that was talking about um, getting a diagnosis um, of cancer or something that's really extreme because it presents you like this block of energy, right? You actually feel it like, holy moly. Now this could be for you on any level, right? This could be a uh, loss of a job, loss of a partner, end of a relationship, um, having to move home or, you know, like whatever it is, it, it can be a radical change. It's these little pivot points, right? These are these spiritual nodes that we have in our life, like little breadcrumbs. It's a, a point where it's like, am I going to go this way? Am I going to go this way? Am I going to stay static? Or maybe I'll do something completely different and I'll go this way, <laughs> right? The choice is up to you. So from a spiritual perspective, A, it's giving me an opportunity to examine what I've been doing, what's been working, what has been not working. B, it gives me the opportunity to say, I have choice. I am not stuck in the way that things have been. I don't have to do what anybody tells me. I don't have to do what I've been doing myself that I've been telling me, the little voice in my head telling me. I have choices here. Now I can go out and examine which one and see. I'm gonna look at those choices. See, like the letter C, third point, is looking at these choices. Which ones are coming out of my head, which is overthinking, which might be fear, might be anxiety, might be stress, might be repetitive, um, programming different things that we've done and by programming I mean just things that you've done repeatedly in your life again and again and again so that your amygdala is like yeah hey that's what we're doing that's what's happening when that might not be happening something to think about and looking at all of those and saying okay is this coming out of my head or is this coming out of my heart where do I have these choices there's four choices I've got which one do I want to take which one feels right which one feels good in my chest which one makes me go and your whole being relaxes like I just took all my energy down because I was literally just thinking about one of my choices <sighs> hope you're feeling that hope you get to feel that yourself and then you can move forward with that and so that is sort of the spiritual aspect of this whole situation so yeah there you go. I hope you found that useful. If you did, let me know. Uh, I'm going to wrap it up now because I'm getting pretty sore and I have to edit this and see if I can get this out tomorrow. It's going to be a pretty simple video. That's why I wanted to shoot it all in one go so I don't have... Did you know that when I do the art videos there's up to 200 edits? Bet you didn't know that. I might actually even do a whole series on how to edit video one day. That might be helpful too. Let me know what you guys are looking for because I love to share. That's my thing. That's the thing that lights me up and makes me feel good. I love to share stuff that you find helpful. So yes, here we are. I'm going to go eat my breakfast that took me two and a half hours to make. <laughs> I guess you could call it slow food. <laughs> She's so punny. Wah, wah. It's horrible. Horrible. Anyway, I'm going to go enjoy a beautiful day. And uh, yeah, things are gonna shift. So I don't know where we're gonna be next week, what's happening. I know this will be better. Will it be healed and ready to go back to painting and creating yet? Nope. And I'm okay with that. So there we go. So that's my video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. The au natural version of me. And uh, nice to see you guys. Thanks for hanging out. I love having you here. Thanks for watching. And I love to share, so like, share, subscribe, and comment 
It really does help get this content out to people who need to see it. And if that was you today, let me know by giving me a thumbs up on the video. All right, love you guys so much and I will catch you next time. Bye. Okay, here's hoping I hit the record button this time. <laughs>